Hi, my name is Gregory Turner Raman, and I'll be talking about empathy, history, and design fiction making. Uh, I am currently program head of art and design at the University of Idaho. My research and creative activity explores the intersections of physical and virtual spaces and visual and experiential storytelling. This is the University of Idaho, and it's kind of nestled in the hills of the Palouse in North Idaho. Uh, the program is actually quite small, and our artists and designers commingle throughout their four years. Uh, you can see the overlap is the foundations courses, the history and theory, uh, studio electives, and senior studio, which is the capstone course. In our uh, history and theory series, uh, you can see that um, we have uh, basically a visual culture emphasis, although there are some design history and um, art history courses. The class we'll be talking about is Art 409 Visual Studies, which is a class that really caters to uh, the um, upper division undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, usually, um, students don't necessarily understand how history relates to their profession or their uh, work as designers or artists for that matter. So uh, one thing that I've noticed is that uh, there's often that disconnect and especially when they get back into the studio it's difficult for them to kind of pull from history uh, other than maybe superficially looking at uh, stylistic references and such. Um, and I, I, I made it a, a, an effort with this class to really try to get them to, to see the value of history and theory. The visual studies course is actually an analysis, evaluation, and critique of visual practices, technologies, and epistemological structures at the intersection of sciences, medicine, art, and design. So what, what does that actually mean? I don't know. Uh, I, but I found that that's really liberating. It's a really open class and it allows students to explore maybe the intersections, the overlap of the sciences and humanities and art and design. So uh, what I've done is really kind of focused on a particular topic. So in the past, I've taught about prostheses. Um, I've taught about data visualization and storytelling. Um, the class that I'm going to be talking about primarily is the development of modern medical practices and technologies. Um, the more recent iter iteration of the class was the land art and ecological change. Uh, the goals for this course were to get students to try to understand when we learned to study illness in the body in a significantly different way from the past and to learn what visualizing technologies had an impact on that change. Um, what were the more recent changes in technologies and, and how are those changes going to impact the patient experience? And we were also discussing um, the body and illness and how we actually talk about it differently. What are some of those narratives and how has that changed? Um, my secret uh, teacher goals were to get the students to create new things related to course topics and to make connections between the history and theory and their future in design. And all of these things are really centered around a sort of uh, uh, individualized, very human-centered approach to education, to design, to theory and history. Uh, I often have my students really play with this notion of uh, learning through making. And I use this idea as a kind of an abductive method of reasoning. So abductive reasoning is pulling data and trying to make a conclusion about something. So for instance, a medical diagnosis, which we'll talk about in a minute, is actually a, a form of abductive reasoning. For art and design students, this is maybe taking the um, knowledge that they've attained 
and uh, working with mental and external imagery to, to get some unintended ideas and solutions that will hopefully emerge from mixing these things up. Um, for artists and designers, really playing with ideas, putting things together, and creating visual and physical models is sort of a natural way to learn about something. That's what they do, right? So in this class, I was really interested in the history of medicine. I didn't know anything about it. And I found a really interesting period of time where it was this change from medieval medicine to sort of modern practical medicine. So uh, I found this book by Foucault, um, The Birth of the Clinic, which is really studies of the, the, the kind of development of knowledge and the discussions are really about that, that exact change from medieval medicine to the modern clinical practice. Um, another book that I wanted students to kind of play with and read was The Wounded Storyteller, which talks about patient narratives and actually the discussion of narratives and stories coming from patients themselves is actually a really nice uh, counterpoint to the sort of clinical approach that develops uh, from uh, modern medicine. Uh, for the class, really, I uh, wanted them to engage with the text, but um, you know, it's hard to get them to read. I'm sure you've all experienced this, so I've asked them to download an ebook, listen to it, um, do a text to speech, of a PDF if they needed to, whatever they could do to get involved with the text and to sort of get to understand it and to experience it. I gave them outside resources, things like uh, the Stanford and Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And I asked them to share whatever they found, whether it was news articles or whatever. Um, that was true about not only uh, um, you know, discussions about the text, but images, even objects. And then I asked them to start making things and storytelling and playing with ideas. And then for the final project, I asked them to do something that was uh, sort of related to their interests. So a self-directed exploration of ideas. So all this again comes back to this very kind of um, emic idea, this idea that it's coming from their own culture. And it's really important that they're making because making is in that abductive model essential to understanding. So drawing is thinking. Making something by hand helps the students really to more profoundly understand ideas and to make connections between ideas. Making is actually manipulative abduction, if you will. So I start them with conceptual mapping. So what I do there is I, I ask them what they know. Just tell me what you know about this topic. And uh, but this often, you know, just at the very beginnings, getting them to, to share ideas and to, to maybe find words that they've heard before. Um, and those become key terms. We find key terms and then we start to make connections between them. So here's a, a, a mind map that we made. Uh, usually I do this on a whiteboard and you can see the first word that they create, created was diagnosis. They looked at that, they had heard that before and I related it to the clinical gaze, the thing that we were reading about so that's my, my addition there in color. And then you can see there was also this discussion about doctor and prognoses. And uh, they were really curious about the difference between diagnosis and prognosis. So that began a long conversation. If you look on the left-hand side of this um, diagram, you can see there's all sorts of really interesting things. So they're talking about testing and symptoms, but there's a whole big section all about bureaucracy and clipboard culture and insurance and poverty and access to healthcare. And these are really 
interesting discussions. I did not promote this. This was coming organically out of the, uh, the discussions in class. And one thing that stuck with me was this term uh, clipboard culture, which we eventually tied to this kind of clinical approach to medicine and bureaucracy. It's the connection between this. Um, okay, and then I asked them to do thematic exploration and organization. So what happens here is they're pulling images and they're beginning to sort them in some way. They're beginning to kind of play with them, um, look at them, analyze them. And here I've asked them to put them in order from the earliest to the latest. And you can see there is the um, leeches, leech therapy, uh, all the way over to the modern um, uh, devices there on the right. Uh, and this is actually put into correct order. Um, you'll notice that this stethoscope looks kind of out of place, but in terms of when these were created, the stethoscope is in the right place. It also kind of, we have these discussions about um, representation, what's going on with the imagery, because it's a flashy, clean kind of contemporary image, we tend to put it elsewhere in the timeline. Um, then we ask, I asked them to, to, to do something a little bit further, to take that kind of exploration and to contextualize a specific period of time. So this is contextualization is a more focused version of thematic exploration. It narrows the parameters. And in this class, we were really, that period of time we were playing with was the 1770s to the 1830s. So I asked them to go out and find images from specifically that period of time. And they came back with these images. And you can see um, in the discussions about this, it was kind of interesting. I asked them to kind of analyze and they talk about the clothing. They talk about maybe power relationships. Uh, they talk about decor. Uh, they're trying to read these things. And, and we really fixated actually on the floors in these two images. So you'll see carpeting, and so you maybe, this is a kind of upper class person on the right, and on the left, there's this kind of grid marking on the floor, so it's, it's like this kind of um, uh, 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 diagrammatic or scientific uh, representation. It's meant to kind of give it an air of uh, serious study there. Uh, but the most powerful image is this, which not only is it kind of horrifying, um, and dramatic, but we also see something that we don't see in the other images, and that's someone investigating a body by going into the body. So you see the use of a tool to investigate inside the body. Um, once we get a kind of feel for that uh, period of time, um, we can extrapolate and move into the future. We can begin to talk about our contemporary times. We can talk about what will be coming. And I asked the students to kind of design something by thinking of the future. Uh, and in this um, project, you can see, um, I, you know, I specifically asked them to design a device or something that would change uh, medicine in the future. And this student's uh, solution was uh, playing with the idea of for-profit American healthcare. And the, the product here is a um, kind of dystopian drug delivery snack treat that combines uh, two um, things, the over-the-counter drugs and um, cookies. Uh, another thing uh, we was a discussion about uh, drugs and their side effects. And this student thought that was really funny. All these discussions about um, uh, side effects, and so sh she designed a advert that really uh, would celebrate the side effects. Um, some other projects, uh, another uh, design fiction project was to find some sense and to um, augment this in some way. And so here's a student's uh, suction gloves using tentacle-like elements for better grip a sonar cane where students could use sound to inform uh, the user of uh, nearby obstacles. 
and then an augmented hearing headband, which uses a simple plastic tab to move the ears forward. So they're really kind of funny little devices, um, but they're act actually really clever. They're asking the students to think about um, how to enhance something that may be deficient. Okay, uh, another aspect of this is visual storytelling. I asked the students to uh, describe something um, using a visual story. Um, maybe this would be about something in the past or the contemporary era. Um, this student in particular, was it was really interesting because she felt that the book, Birth of the Clinic, was really dry and clinical. And uh, from a theory point of view, she was uh, rebelling against the logocentrism. The, the use of words solely. So she produced these images and um, in essence illustrated the book and she made 20 or 30 of these drawings and cut them up and went to the university and um, slipped them in the book. She didn't glue them in of course, but she slipped them in so people could find that and uh, get some sort of visual element to the, to the text. Um, I had a student that uh, documented every single day during the school week all the times he had to take drugs for his different ailments. And what he essentially developed was this, what he called a self-portrait. And it shows how often he had to kind of consider his health. Um, another student was looking at the cost of organs and she chose to kind of go back to this moment in um, art history and to talk about the body. And uh, the, through this method, um, uh, really describe the um, cost of the body and, and this sort of clinical notion of the body as, as an object. Um, another student, uh, a digital media student, really um, did a fantastic job compositing images um, so all these are all separate images that he's put together to kind of give a sense of this cold clinical operating theater. And he really tried to give a, a, an emotional response or this sort of effective uh, uh, idea about um, the clinical gaze. Um, and another student took this, this storytelling project and for her final project began to develop these um, kind of uh, representations of ergonomic data, she found and was kind of upset by the fact that a lot of ergonomic data is based on the male body. And um, so she overlaid data with affirmational words and sentences and things that you could rearrange and in essence, obscure that data with your own narrative, right? Um, another student uh, took uh, visual representations of diseases and um, placed them on the faces of, of people who were diagnosed so they, uh, with those illnesses. And it shows how uh, disease becomes something that's all-consuming, that alters and consumes identity. So uh, what's going on here? Well, um, there's multiple ways of engaging in course content. There's conceptual mapping, there's thematic exploration and contextualization. But the three key component, uh, components in this are the visual storytelling, the design fiction making, and a playful artistic or speculative investigation. So uh, what, what happens through abductive and manipulate, manipulative abduction is a sort of playful, uh, playful, I don't know, interaction with ideas. And um, inevitably, through something like um, the storytelling project, uh, students will kind of bring in their own uh, experiences. And that's a unique thing. They are understanding uh, the course material through their own experience. Um, that man manipulation, manipulative abduction is used in making images to explore ideas. 
design kitchen is storytelling and can be a really important part of the design process and being able to communicate this to students that they can take history and apply it to something in the future is really valuable. Uh, history and theory with that ample exploration can make design narratives and research even practical. So uh, all this is student-centered, it's uh, storytelling, it's ideas and imagery, and it really is being, being, giving the students how to use their own experiences to understand the topic a little bit carefully and um, innately. So, so I'll try away from asking the students that we have those, those personal experiences they can see really make uh, so much project rich. Thank you very much. And, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email.